everyone, it's Pam Jorgensen here and I'm working with Cheryl O'Brien and we are bringing you a, some card tutorials using the beautiful Ornate Thanks stamp set along with the Ornate Border dies. So um, we are going to, I want to show you how to make this cute, whoops, as I knock everything into the camera, this cute thank you card with the small daisy um, punch and some different design of series paper. So really, really cute. So let's show you what you will have in your kit. So you will have a piece of Whisper White thick cardstock. Now we're using thick because it makes your card stand up so much nicer um, than just your normal cardstock that we use for layers. And I have pre-scored this one. So this is five and three quarters of an inch by eight in, um, oh my gosh, my brain is shut off this morning. It's basically just a half of a piece of um, your cardstock and score that at four and one eighth of an inch. And that will give us a perfect um, half of a card. And what, because we score that, your cardstock will not crack. So you will find that with the thick cardstock, it often likes to crack if you haven't scored it first. So that, that's the way that you get the nice fold. Now we have another piece of your designer series paper. And this particular piece of paper is two and a half inches wide by five and three quarters inch long. You will also have a piece of old olive. And this one is two and a half inches by four and a quarter inch. And then we just have this little, this one's just a quarter inch smaller, so two and a quarter inch by four. All right. The last thing that we will need is I have gone ahead and used our die and cut out this cute little border and I'm just going to snip that free. And I think you've seen that in my last video um, that I used the same edge, which probably I shouldn't have. I should have probably switched up and used a different one, but I have a feeling that these are going to become my favorite friends. And then we have a piece of the matching old olive or um, ribbon that comes in the ornate garden kit. All right, so let me get all of this out of the way because I guarantee you if I don't, I will stamp on it. And all I'm going to need is that little piece of white um, designer or white paper, white cardstock. I'm gonna pull in my old olive ink and I already have the word thanks mounted on my stamp set or on my block from out of the um, ornate thanks stamp set. Now, in order to get that fun look, we're going to alternate and we're going to use what's called the generation stamping um, technique. So what's gonna happen, let me just show you, is I'm gonna first stamp, you can choose the top or the bottom, maybe for this one I'll start with the bottom first, just because I'm looking in the camera and I can't quite see right on top. And I'm going to stamp that down once and I'm going to lift it up and I'm going to go right above it and stamp it again. And you can see how you get the two different colors and you can use this with any stamp pad that is dark. So any of your darker colors, your petal pinks probably wouldn't work because it would get too light. But this is just a fun, way to use your stamp pads in a different manner. Now this may not be totally straight because I'm looking over a camera, but we'll do the best we can. And you get the idea. There we go. Now, if you don't like how you get your edge, you can always trim that off. Sometimes I actually leave a little bit of um, a wider piece of cardstock, and then I actually go in and trim it. But this doesn't look too bad, and it's quite fun. Okay, so let's bring in back the rest of our project. So with my designer series paper, I'm just going to run some of my snail down that edge and go ahead and attach that cute, adorable, love this edge onto the side of that. It just makes it look so fresh and fun. And I'll just give that a little bit of a haircut right there. Get that out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and layer that down onto the front of my card. Now I like to use the snail. 
I like to use that tape runner, but if you use liquid glue, that's fine as well. And then I'm just going to line this up on my card. Now I do like to leave a little bit of a white border on the side, but that's up to you what you, what you like. You could have it right to the edge of your card if you wished. Oh, and I even got it straight, that's even better. Okay, now I'm just going to angle that. Now, I don't want my card to be too thick or I know that I have to pay extra postage. So we're going to try to keep it limited to the amount of dimensionals that we put on here. So I'm gonna leave this layer flat and I'm just going to angle that, something like that. Okay, now I'm gonna set this aside for the moment. So let's work on the front. So we are using the sprig punch, you will have gotten two of your Blushing Bride sprig pieces in there, okay? And then you will have gotten two of the, they call this the medium daisy, but I call it the small daisy punch because it's a lot smaller than the other one. So you will have gotten two Whisper White pieces of that. You will have gotten a So Saffron stamen for the inside of your flower, and that's what that one looks like in that again, comes from the Poppy's die set. So you will wanna, it's a very versatile set and you'll wanna get your hands on that if you don't have that yet. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my ribbon and I remember I like to use my stapler. So what I'm going to do first is I'm gonna make like a, a cancer loop or any kind of fundraising loop that we have, whoops. Just make a little bit of a loop. And I'm going to lay that on the edge of my card project. And I am going to give it a staple. Now, I'm not going very far into my cardstock because I don't want it to show when I'm finished, right? But your staplers make it, make your um, ribbon, it's just so much easier to attach your ribbon if you staple. Okay, so here we go. So we have that done. So let's assemble our daisy. Now I'm going to be using some of the mini, the little mini uh, dimensionals, but if you don't have any of these, you can certainly use a piece of your standard dimensionals and just cut it down so that it doesn't show from behind your little daisy petals. Cause whoops, he's so cute. There we go, I'm just going to tug him over a little bit so he's more in the middle. And then I'm just gonna fluff his petals a little bit. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add a drop of glue down in the middle and attach that So Saffron little um, stamen. And before I stick it in, I'm just going to bend up those petals a little bit so he looks really nice and cute. And I might even use my scissor to push that down into that glue. I like to use glue because then I know that those pieces don't fall apart on me. All right, so let's go back to our card and I get that assembled. So for this one, I'm going to pop that up using my standard dimensionals while my flowers and everything is die, dying, not dying, drying. My goodness, I can't even speak today. I think I've just been talking too much. There we go. And I'm just going to pop those on. And I don't know about you, but I love to use the pick tool to remove dimensional covers because you can just, whoops, that one of course is not going to cooperate. I like to just stab them and it just pops those covers off. And more importantly, see how they stick on the end? Then you can just go pop those in the trash and you don't have those little covers hanging out everywhere. All right, let's come back to the card. I'm just gonna make that go straight up and down there we go. All right, and I think, whoops, it's not quite dry, but that's okay. So I'm gonna figure out where I want my daisy to go. And I think I'm gonna have my daisy go right here. So I'm gonna put a dimensional right next to that ribbon. Because remember, dimensionals do not like ribbon. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue to hold that daisy on. And I'm just gonna pop that down right there. And now I'm gonna come in with my little um, sprigs and I'm going to use my glue dots and 
stick those down underneath. I like to add my sprigs at the end only because then I know exactly where they're going and I can, um, I can, um, whoops, decide where I want that to go. I'm gonna tuck that one right there. I'll just give that a little bit of a push. Now because I have glue on the back of that daisy, that daisy will move around a little bit, so I'm going, I'm a little careful as I am poking around underneath of it and holding that daisy in place while I'm messing around. There we go, cute, cute. Now to finish it, you may have the gilded gems, um, but I'm going to go ahead and add some of the clear, so I'm just going to, whoops, might put a couple right here. And I think I'll put, it's interesting. I think you're gonna make the same card twice, but depends where you put, how your flower lays out. I'm still gonna put a couple of um, little gems up here. Only I might go that way, perfect. And how easy peasy is that cute little card? Oh, I think our middle needs one. Let's come back and add a gem in our middle. Whoops, there he goes, popped up. We'll put a little one right in there. Cute, okay. So there's our little front of our card. How easy is that? So using your generation stamping to get that fun um, two-toned look on the front. And then here's the original card. And what I did was I just stamped for everything on the inside and just added a piece of extra dement, um, a scrap of the designer series paper. And this is another layer um, on the inside of your card. So you will have received that in your kit. All right, you guys, it's a great way to use scraps. You've used scraps on the front um, to make that cute, cute card. So happy creating. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.